So we're here with Foxy Suzanne, first of all. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Very good. Very, very good. First of all, congratulations for being the best live band at South by Southwest. Oh, thank you. Oh, Seriously. Thank you. I think people are going to be talking about you guys. Tell people who weren't lucky enough to be at the show that you just played here at Stubbs at the Spin Party what they missed. I messed up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we had we had a we had a bunch of fun and um if they missed this one, then they can they can see us uh, in a few hours. <laughs> cool. And Maybe not by the time this goes yeah, yeah. up. And then yeah. a few hours later after that too. Yeah. So and they can see your video on Yahoo. Basically, we'll we'll be pretty busy all summer, so hopefully we'll catch we'll, you you'll catch a show. It's kind of it's kind of uh, undescribable, I think. So, but that's the beauty of it. So come and see it for yourself. I do feel there's not that many bands that are doing what you guys are doing in the sense of like a real rock show. Like a lot of the bands here at South by Southwest are just sort of like staring at their feet or being like yeah. kind of selfie facing. Like is, where do you come up with the, the vibe of your live shows, which is like over the events, you know what I mean? Yeah, well I think we were all kind of born to be performers. Like that's just the way we came out of our moms. <laughs> like, uh, we were just, we're, we were definitely, uh, we're, we're natural, natural born entertainers. So it seems like you have a different persona off stage than. Absolutely, I always say that the six guys on stage have nothing in common with the, the six guys off the stage. So I don't know how or what. I don't even like that dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you get into that place though? Like I imagine when people like meet you off stage, they're all like, "Oh, you're not like yeah. psychotic or crazy or like you're even talking differently. You have a different voice." Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> you just, just channel it? Yeah. yeah, it just kind of happens when, you, when we get up there. Uh-huh. So how would uh, how would you, uh, this is like your third album coming out, right? Uh -huh. So how, how has been your, uh, I can't speak, it's South by Southwest, I've been kind of the progression and What's stuff. been the evolution, the progression, that's yeah. the word. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been cool. Like, you know, we had the first album that was kind of all us. That it, no one else had anything to do with it besides us in a basement. Mm -hmm. And the second album was that next little level with like the indie label and we still, you know, still doing what we do and it's like, and then the next, the next label, the next thing is, is our, our, um, our major, major label debut, which is, uh, what's coming out in, in next month. And, uh, it's all just been a very gradual, gradual, um, like level by level. We've never skipped over steps. We, we've kind of just gone step by step. And, this is just the next step, and uh, we're like extremely proud of what we did. And it's it's just we're Foxy Shazam. It's just another record. No, it's not just another record. Well, I mean, it's just another record of Foxy Shazam. Okay. Yeah. Do you consider yourselves to be an ambitious band? A what? Yeah. Ambitious. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Our, our ultimate goal as a band is to be the biggest band in the world and go down in history for doing what we do. And I know that we're a very long, long way from that right now, but we're not going to die until we get there. Pretty ambitious. Yeah. Very, very ambitious. I would say that is the tech, the definition of ambitious. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll kill anyone who gets in our way. Uh-oh. So, um, I've heard a rumor that some of you or one of you is writing for Meatloaf. This is t please yeah. tell me this rumor's true. Yes, I, I went and wrote for Meatloaf. Um, I think a couple months ago, with my now really good friend Justin Hawkins from The Darkness, whom I worship. Uh, he's great. I, <laughs> I worship. I worship him too. But he's a great friend, and and we met through that experience that we did together with Meatloaf and. I met, we, you know, Rob Cavalla actually produced one of the songs on our new album, and that's how that connection was made because Rob Cavalla produced the new Meatloaf, and when I went to work with Meatloaf, he was there, and so a, a bunch of good things came out of that opportunity that I was given, and Meatloaf is a, is a huge inspiration to me, and it's, it was really fun. I hear, I've been trying to describe you guys, I, as a music journalist, I should be able to do that, but it's been hard, and I've sort of said you're, you kind of have a bit of Meatloaf, like you're sort of like an indie rock Meatloaf. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely <laughs> something that's there, but I, I like... I mean, the theatricalness yeah, and the yeah. sort of the vocals, yeah. definitely. I would say that instead of us being inspired by Meatloaf, I think me, I think us and Meatloaf are inspired by the same thing. Which is? Theater and, like, opera and just, like, just, I don't know, really, um... Larger entertain, yeah, enter, entertaining things that seem, seem unnatural and unreal, and that's cool, and I think it... Like, people always try to, to ask me, how do we describe our sound? And I can never give, an, give them an, uh, an answer because I just don't know, and I'm really proud of them. 
are there, would you say your influences are less like from rock? Because you mentioned opera and things like that. Is it more yeah. like outside of rock I and mean, roll? Me personally, I, I know a lot of our influences come from things outside of music, like different foods and, and, <laughs> and, and smells, like the way that burning wood smells and the way that my dad smelled when he would come in after cutting the grass. Just, just every song on this album is just something that was inspired from something other than music. We kind of tried to stay away from that in this album. So uh, I always tell people, like, when they're listening to our album, just think of your favorite things because that's what good music is. It doesn't matter what, you know, everybody says it reminds them of. It's just what it reminds you of. As long as that's your favorite things, then it's good music. I don't know if I've ever interviewed a band that was directly influenced by smell. Yeah. You should have a scratch and sniff version of your album. That would be awesome. Oh my god, cool. Well, if you think about it, idea. smell is the uh, main trigger for memory. Yeah. yeah. Smell triggers memory faster than any other sense. Yeah. It's actually not the worst idea. That's pretty good. So if we went Scratches. through your songs, like if I had the track list in front of you, you would be able to associate each album with a... With a smell or a taste or a... a yeah, like the taste of, of uh, our first, the, the, the girl's spit from our first kiss. <laughs> This is yeah. the scent of a cat's paw. Yeah, no, but... <laughs> maybe not, maybe on the next yeah. album. Yeah. This, well, it's pretty smelly in Austin, so I would ima imagine you might be inspired yeah. to do yeah. it. I'll go sn I'll go, I'll, we'll go sniffing around later and see if we can come up with any songs. What kind of song would you write if, like, after smelling like Stubbs barbecue food? <sighs> Probably a really meaty song. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. So after South by Southwest, what is next for you in terms of? We're going to be busy all summer, so we're going to be coming to every, hopefully every every city in the United States. Every uh, we want to go to Europe. We want to go to the UK. So we'll be around for sure, nonstop. Okay. And one last question, because I think it's a great song lyric. What is the inspiration behind the lyric? Uh, life is a bitch, but she's totally doable. I want that on a shirt. Yeah, I, I think it, it's, I mean, I, I, Alex, you might be able to answer this better than me, but I think for the most part, it's just it kind of, you know, life is a bitch sometimes, but she's totally doable. <laughs> when you get down on yourself, just always know that there's, there's always a bright side. There's always yeah. a light, you know, no matter how hard it gets. It's just kind of a, it should be an uplifting thing. Sometimes life is a is is mean to you, but she's really pretty, and um, sometimes yeah, she's ready to go. Yeah, she's ready to go. I think so. Do her. <laughs> she's hot. <laughs> By doer, what does that mean? Do her like, um, do her, as in experience her. Do some hot rock. Yeah, experience her. I think that's a very inspirational note on which to end this interview. Yeah. Yes, it's a, it, seriously, put it on a shirt, a smell, a scratch and sniff shirt. Yeah, experience and, uh, life, she's ready for good. you. Awesome. And is the world, like our band. and the world is ready for Foxy Shazam. Foxy Shazam. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.